Hey everyone, we're back. You're watching Meet Firebase and we're in the middle of an interview with Mike Bennell. Mike, tell me, what do you like about working with the Firebase team? Yeah, I think it's just getting to help developers go build awesome apps, right? Like we're just helping remove obstacles to app creation and app development. And there's so many ways that we can improve the world through apps, either through healthcare and medicine, is it through improved access to education and technology. Um, when I was on the, the way here, uh, one of the drivers in the car I was in uh, talked about how he had used Google and YouTube to like teach himself English because he was uh, an immigrant. And so he was like, I watched YouTube videos and things like that. And so I think just the power that we have at Google to make people's lives better is, is awesome. And I think Firebase is a key component of that with mm -hmm. uh, app creation. Yeah, we had um, <clears throat> Michael Bly was on the show earlier, and he said something similar, just uh, empowering developers. It's almost like a, a force multiplier where you can help uh, one person or two people, but when you're creating a platform that helps you know, hundreds, thousands of developers. Now, you know, that's impact, right? Yeah, it's, well, and I think it's it's the hundreds of thousands of developers, but it's also their millions upon millions of users. Uh, so if you think about like crash reporting, for example, is uh, something that I've worked on for a while. And that like the more we can help developers solve those crashes, the more people can use their apps and use their, their phones without problems. Uh, and that means all of those people are having a better day, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, well, yeah, nobody likes it when their app crashes, for sure. <laughs> Neither the developers nor the users, so. It seems like something, you know, it, it, it's it's almost like something you'd think we'd have solved by now. Like, you know, the crashes seem like, isn't there just enough knowledge out there that we can prevent them all? But it never seems to be a shortage of bugs in programs. Like, is there a way to solve that? Is there a way to just, like, eliminate them all together? <laughs> I think they were, t were starting to talk about robots and AI writing the apps for us. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, well, you know, there's, like, preventative tools. There's, like, linters and things like that that are, like, smarter about catching errors before they get into your app. But then, you know, it seems like... It, can we be totally effective in that? Yeah, I think we've come a long way. Like, you know, linters and things like that definitely help. Um, but if you think about like five or six years ago, um, back when Crashlytics first started, you know, we didn't even have good crash reporting, right? Like, yeah, you just yeah. had to manually get a symbol file, uh, match it with a random crash that you got from, you know, Apple or things like that, and then do manual symbolication for every single crash. And we process many, many crashes. And so just even handling that part makes it a lot easier. Um, but yeah. we have actually, in Firebase and Fabric launched uh, what's called Crash Insights. And that is where we've kind of scanned crashes that affect many apps and try to figure out solutions for those and present those to developers. So I think we are actually mm -hmm. starting to get there where it's like, we can't stop the crashes from happening, but if we know the solution, we can let you know. Mm -hmm. But it seems like also a lot of apps might use the same library and then you end up with the same crash and the same library that many apps are using. It seems like that could, if we could like squash that, that seems like Yeah, I, I think that's a really interesting area to, to dig into more. In. Who knows? Who knows? So um, Firebase just announced that it's GDPR compliant. Uh, what does that mean? What's GDPR? Uh, so GDPR stands for General Data and Pr Privacy Regulations. OK. General, General Data, Data Privacy Regulations. OK. Yes. Uh, and so this is coming out of the EU. Uh, and so it's just a complete revamp of privacy legislation, probably the biggest one in the past 30 or 40 years. OK. Um, and so it's, I think, something that's on a lot of developers' minds. I know it's been on my mind for the past uh, year or so. Uh, it's mm -hmm. been a, a lot of work to become GDPR compliant because it's a kind of fundamental rethink in um, app privacy. Right. And so what have you done to sort of help that along? Yeah, so uh, I've done a lot of work on the documentation side of things, which is kind of working with our legal counsel and engineering teams to kind of figure out, like, hey, what policies do we have in place? And if developers want to become GDPR compliant, what can we do to help them do that? Like, uh, And a lot of this is around just making sure that you have clear consent from your users about what data is being collected and how it's being used. OK, so what does that look like, consent from your from your users? Yeah, so a lot of this is this is like a, a pop-up or a dialogue when the app is first launched or something like that, and just kind of saying, like, hey, this, we're going to collect your email address because we want to send you an email, right? Or we want to collect analytics data because we want to see which parts of our apps are being used or not, so we know okay. where to focus our time. So you have to give some sort of rationale. So you have to say what you're trying to collect and why you want to collect it. Yeah, exactly. And make it really clear that users can opt out of that at any point in time as well. Okay. So it's being much more. It's like, it's, it's a very upfront and honest about what yes. you're doing, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like, I think the concerns from a lot of users is that apps are just silently harvesting information without any understanding of what is being done with that information. Yeah, That exactly. seems like a valid concern. Yeah, right? I think it is a valid concern. Uh, I think a lot of times apps are trying to act in good faith for it. Like, you know, again, like we want to collect crash reports so that we can make the app more stable. Uh, and, you know, as a result of that, we might want to store your email address with that 
uh, crash so that we can reach out to you, letting you know when the crash is fixed or letting you know, hey, we need information to solve this crash. How can we do that? But I think a lot of times that wasn't clear, like why you were asking for this information. So I think that's one of the big changes with, with GDPR. OK, yeah. And I know that with Firebase, uh, there's been a very firm stance that we don't collect uh, uh, PII, so personally identifiable information. Does GDPR add to that, or does it complement that? Yeah, so GDPR uh, really is on personally identifiable information. So it's like if you're going to try and upload my contacts, right? Like then you need to be very clear as to why you're doing that. If you want to log my phone number, then you need to be very clear as to why you're doing that. And so I think it's a much bigger focus on forcing uh, app developers and companies around the world to be focused on user privacy in a way that we haven't seen before. So I'm personally excited by it because I think it's a great shift in focus. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, both developers and users will benefit from this. Yeah. So. Yeah, because you think there's been many apps in years past that have done kind of really shady stuff with uh, user data or things like that. And so I think this is really going to prevent that. And the fines for noncompliance are fairly high. So it's up to really? 4% of your daily revenue, of the oh, company's daily wow. revenue. That seems so, <laughs> fairly steep <laughs> to yeah. get into your margins pretty um, well. So that, that's, I think, you know, the, the stick is, is strong with the GDPR. And I think that's also a big difference that we've seen from other privacy regulations in the past. OK. And you said this comes from the EU. Uh, so that's where the that's where the legislation is starting. Now, Passed, yeah. Okay. Okay. So how is that? I mean, is that being adopted around the world? So it's it's interesting because it's effective May twenty fifth of twenty eighteen, uh, and so we're seeing lots of apps try and become compliant ahead of time because otherwise you can suffer from these penalties. Um, but the the key part is is that if any of the users of your app are in the EU, then you're subject to GDPR. Uh, and so it's kind of like GDPR being spread around the world because most companies have users in Europe in some way, shape, or form. Right, um, yeah. And so if you have end users in Europe, then you need to comply with these laws. OK, yeah, because I know on the Android App Store, typically you just say publish everywhere, like all the countries, yeah. right? So yeah. if you want to keep doing that, you probably need to be thinking about this. Even if you, like, if you live in the United States, even if you're not personally held uh, by that, you're, you know, a, a big chunk of your users maybe, and so right. you're still forced to think about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, you are forced to think about it. And uh, Fabric and Firebase, since they process this information, we're also responsible for that, and so that's why we have to be very clear about what we're using user data for and things like that. Mm -hmm. Just pretty much to provide Firebase, so like we're using it to provide the service. Um, you know, you're storing data in, you know, uh, RTDB or Firestore so that you have don't have a backend, right. uh, but it's so that you can have an app. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, definitely go read about that. Check that out if you haven't done so already, because you're likely affected even if you don't know that you are. Yeah, so. yeah and there's some great documentation uh, on the Firebase documentation site, so be sure to check that okay, out. OK, yeah, we'll put some links to that in the description below, as usual. So awesome. well, Mike, thanks for being on the show. Doug, it was a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, thank you for tuning in. So be sure to subscribe here to the Firebase channel to get more great video content like this and meet more DevRel like Mike, and I'll see you here next time. Offsides. That means we have to switch seats. You know what this is? Okay. Card. No shoes on the field. That's okay. I have another one. <laughs>